You want to know if you're living a surrendered life? Look at your relationship with Jesus. Is it convenient or is it costly? If we could put the first verse up there one more time, Luke chapter 22, verse 54. After they seize him, look at what it says. He led him away, brought him to the high priest's house, and then says this. Meanwhile, Peter was following at a distance. Okay, so we can pause the story right there. We can grab Peter. We can get a microphone and do like an on-field interview and say, hey, Peter, quick question for you. Are you still following Jesus? And we give him the mic and Peter could say, yes. I'm following Jesus. Just close enough that it doesn't actually affect or disrupt my life. At a distance. So he's there and I'm here. I'm following him, but I'm not following him close enough to be disrupted. I'm not following him close enough to actually have things changed or affected or made different in my life because of my affiliation and relationship with him. This is a temptation that too many of us, especially those of us who have grown up in church can fall into because we know how to play the part. We know how to speak the language. We know how to make it look like I'm following Jesus when we, when we know well and good that we are actually not. That we are following him, but at a safe enough distance to not actually be affected by our relationship with him. He could have followed Jesus to an extent here that could have made him a criminal as well. Arrested alongside him. Maybe even crucified the next morning. But Peter doesn't do that. He just follows at a distance. If we are living lives, again, where we are serving ourselves, the question we ask in every situation is, how will this cost me the very least? Um, a few weeks ago, I got a phone call that no one wants to get. We come home from um, a trip, and a half of our house had no electricity. So I had an electrician come out, and I thought it was just a couple fuses that needed to be replaced, maybe a couple hundred bucks. The electrician calls me and says, all right, you got two options one will cost you very little, but it won't solve any of your problems. The other is going to cost you a lot, but it'll fix everything. Which one do you want to do? I said, sir, you shouldn't have asked me which one do I want to do, because I don't want to spend any money. <laughs> hey, I have come to give you life and life to its fullest. What does that mean for me? It means that you would pick up your cross and you would die daily. You would count the cost. Jesus, I'm not experiencing the life and abundance that you've offered me. I don't have the joy that you've given me. Could it be because our entire life and your entire life is built asking this question, how can I follow Jesus just close enough to not let it actually affect and change my life? I want you, Jesus, on the bad days, but I don't want you to speak into things when they're going well. When was the last time Jesus told you no? When was the last time you said no to something because of your relationship with Jesus? I would argue if you have not said no to something recently in light of your relationship with Christ, you're not following Jesus. You're following a different God. They're made in your own image, and you don't tell yourself no very often, and neither do I. We are professionals at justifying and making excuses for why we can live a way that we want to live. And I would just tell you, true joy is found in ultimate surrender. And we don't realize that in an attempt to manufacture our life in a way that following Jesus doesn't cost me anything, what I'm actually doing is I'm creating a life that is built on sand. And when the waves come and when the wind blows and when the rain falls, my foundation will be just that, sinking sand. It will fall and I will not need to be surprised when I look up and see my kingdom that I have built crumbling. My relationship with Jesus is convenient. It's not costly. Could be a reason why we are not surrendered.